Thank you and welcome. Um, today, myself and, and Richard are going to present to you uh, the topic of inter-processor uh, connectivity for future centralized compute platforms. Firstly, the agenda. Um, I'll kick off uh, and start with um, just some highlights on in-vehicle networking trends and then talk about the, the concepts of this all Ethernet in vehicle network. And then we'll investigate some of the, the challenges for Ethernet in this. And at that point, I'll hand over to, to Richard to give you an introduction on PCIe, um, talk about some of the key features, and then conclude with a, a use case of the interprocessor connectivity. In vehicle networking trends, well, today the vehicles are very much decentralized and hardware defined. Um, it consists of many, many uh, application specific buses, maybe 20 or even 30 at any one time. And these are all connected together by a series of distributed uh, gateways. ECUs are very much domain specific and security is relatively ineffective. Uh, many of these buses and the architectures were not really designed at a time where security was that prominent uh, for vehicles. Last but not least, as we know, uh, wiring is very complex uh, and there's lots of it. Um, going forward, we need a much more powerful and flexible in-vehicle network to uh, take on these challenges and the needs for autonomous driving. Uh, here, ECUs are no longer domain-based, but they're uh, zonal, and we'll give an example of that and see that on the next slide. Uh, and we have this centralized compute platform. Uh, the vehicle is IP-based, um, running over a physical layer of Ethernet, connecting device to cloud. And we move to a more software or service-orientated architecture. Ethernet is the enabler for the connected and autonomous vehicle. Um, and it really is a, a need for this zonal ECU and the centralized compute platform. As you can see on the, the block diagram, um, the ECUs are not domain-based, but zonal in each of the zones. And they will collect uh, and move data through all the actuators and sensors within that zone and all that data is then pushed up to this central compute platform to do all the number crunching and to do the intelligence and uh, operation of a, of, a, of a vehicle. And that really leads to, to Ethernet for being that network to connect all these ECUs and compute platforms together. Here we have everything can connect to everything. Um, and you do need a homogeneous network like Ethernet for that. Um, the benefits for Ethernet in the vehicle are pretty well documented. Many people know about this. Um, standards based uh, from multi, -gig, uh, multi bits per second to multi gig. Um, very much proven, worked for many, many years. Um, IP security uh, removes the complex uh, gateways. That's one of the big advantage for having a homogeneous network. And on the wiring, it reduces not just the cost and the weight, but verification, validation, and installation uh, complexities and costs. This, uh, this, this network, this zonal architecture does bring some challenges. And one of the consequences of this is the accumulation of bandwidth. We have here a very simple um, block diagram, an example, where we have four zonal ECUs connected to a centralized compute platform. Each ECU has a, a HD camera connected, consuming just more than, at least more than 10 gig. Um, and then up to six radar or LIDAR sensors, um, consuming about one gigabit per second. And you can see here, very quickly, you uh, accumulate this bandwidth. Between the uh, zonal ECUs, for example, we need a 25 gig link if we're going to have redundancy as well. And then from each ECU, 
to the centralized compute platform, you need links up to 50 gigabits per second. So certainly we are going to need those um, new IEEE standards um, working on uh, right now the 802.3CY which deals with 25, 50, 100 gig as well as the, the current 3 um, CH standard which um, has T1 uh, Ethernet that runs up to 10 gigabits per second. Now, just managing the, the vast data between ECU and centralized compute platform is not the only challenge. We also have to deal with this um, vast bandwidth and data actually within the centralized compute platform. Here we see the, the ECUs connected to um, high performance uh, SOCs. Typically, in a compute platform, you'd have at least two of those or even more, uh, maybe a safety um, uh, MCU as well. And when you look at these types of SOCs, inherently they don't really feature Ethernet. You may get at maximum you know, a one gig link, which is not good enough for, for what we want to do here. So the interface of choice for the high performance compute SOCs is PCIe. So that, needs, that means we need a, a, some sort of PCIe a switch to connect the Ethernet in vehicle network to these compute platforms. With this example we show, you're going to need a, a Gen 4 or 5 type switch um, up to around maybe nine ports, <clears throat> excuse me, up to 560 gigabits per second bandwidth. So what we would advocate is uh, onboard um, PCIe is required for interprocessor connectivity, and then offboard across that in vehicle network, we have Ethernet for both the data and actually also the timing. So we can still use um, .1AS GPT uh, Ethernet based time synchronization across the network um, and connect that also directly to those compute SOCs. You can put um, synchronization and timing across a PCIe switch, but it's a lot simpler and less complex to use either for that. So next I'll hand over to, to Richard um, to take the ball and go through um, some of the uh, features and introduction to PCIe. Oh, okay, thanks, uh, thanks Mike. So an introduction to PCIe. PCIe is a secure, low latency, uh, extremely scalable, high bandwidth interconnect. PCIe is point to point. Uh, it's specified by the PCI SIG uh, group. The bandwidth of a PCIe port can scale by increasing the number of bits per lane. And this is essentially the PCIe generation or increasing the number of lanes uh, assigned to, to an individual port. In the architectures we see today, uh, Gen 4 is quite common. Gen 4 is 16 gigabits per lane. And then in the future, potentially Gen 5 can be used, which gives you 32 gigabits per lane. PCIe uses address-based routing semantics. So uh, Memrite, uh, memory commands uh, can be issued by the host and endpoints. Uh, this means there are no complex IO driver stack overhead, which gives a uh, very minimal latency for the PCIe protocol. The domains are closed topologies. So I'm showing a very simple example here on the right hand side, where we have a host root complex connected to a PCIe switch and then to uh, Ethernet bridge endpoints uh, connected to the downstream ports of that switch. The host root complex is responsible for discovering all the devices in the topology and enumerating those devices. As part of that enumeration, each device is giving a unique ID, which is called a bus device and function number, BDF. And it's also assigned a memory region um, that uh, the device will, will use for communication. Peer-to-peer -peer transactions or IOs between endpoint devices 
connected to a switch is allowed. So in my example, the two Ethernet bridges can communicate directly with each other uh, through the switch, and those transactions do not need to go back to the host. For security, we do have defined access control services, which is an optional feature that can limit peer-to-peer -peer IO uh, for added security. PCIe also guarantees error-free uh, packet transmission. So packets are acknowledged or not acknowledged uh, to confirm good reception. And this happens on a link basis. If no acknowledgement is received or no NAC is received, then an acknowledgement timeout will occur. And in either event of a timeout or a NAC, then the transmitter will uh, retransmit or replay uh, the packet to be sent. Flow control is used, and this is a credit-based flow control. So every port maintains a, a counter of the space available in the far end receive buffer. So a packet will only be sent if it knows there is space for it to be received at the far end port. PCIe has uh, advanced uh, error reporting. Uh, so uh, we can uh, do uh, advanced uh, port status and error checking. Link and end-to-end -end CRCs supported as well. So what are some of the key features uh, in PCIe switches uh, that, uh, that can be used in automotive applications? The first one is PCIe virtual switch partitioning. And with this feature, we can take a single physical PCIe switch and divide it into multiple virtual switch partitions. Each partition has its own root complex and is a completely closed system with individual enumeration and partition reset schemes. You have complete isolation between uh, memory addresses in each of those partitions. And this can be useful for uh, architecting your software architecture uh, for, for security and isolating completely those different memory, memory address regions. It is possible uh, for multi-port endpoints to connect to two different partitions. And I'm showing that here with a dual port storage drive at the bottom. And in this case, both the yellow and the orange host can access the same storage drive uh, through uh, separately through the two ports of that SSD. There are also other methods for sharing storage that we won't cover in this presentation today, um, but uh, you can share storage through non-transparent bridging and uh, multifunction SRIOV capable endpoints can also be shared. Non-transparent bridging is a feature that allows communication between virtual switch partitions. So NTBs provide limited memory windows between those two partitions or domains. A non-transparent endpoint is a function in an upstream port uh, and that is enumerated in each NT enabled partition. Reads or writes that are targeted towards this non-transparent endpoint will be translated to the alternate host memory region. For security, only provisioned devices can access the non-transparent endpoint. A non-transparent driver is required whenever you want to access a host or other device through a non-transparent bridge. The non-transparent bridge driver controls all endpoint device accesses, and this is irrespective of the endpoint device native hardware capabilities. So this gives significant protection and security to, uh, to the host. PCIe multicast is a feature of the switches that can allow to send posted information from any source port 
to a group of destination ports. Multicast is supported with non-transparent bridging, so the destination ports do not need to be in the same virtual switch partition. Multicast address regions can be statically defined for security as well. So modern PCIe switches enable very complex data path routing configurations. Some of the features we've talked about today, virtual switch partitions, non-transparent bridging and multicast can enable a very flexible, modular and secure communication interconnect within the centralized compute platform. The PCIe switches provide the necessary chip interconnect between the SOCs the SSDs, the Ethernet bridges, and they provide this inter interconnect with scalable necessary bandwidth with lowest latency in the order of 100 nanoseconds. And PCIe comes with a strong ecosystem and roadmap. Multiple processors can access the same endpoint, and we see uh, this requirement coming up more and more within automotive. The common example is an SSD or storage media endpoint where multiple hosts want to access that same endpoint. We haven't covered in this presentation all the various ways that a storage device or other endpoint can be shared using PCIe. But uh, if you require more information on, on that, please, uh, please contact us. So in conclusion, the next generation vehicle is becoming a data center on wheels. The central computer and zonal gateways have CPUs, MPUs, GPUs, network access devices, SOCs, accelerators, storage, all natively wanting to communicate PCIe. PCIe switches connect all of these processors within the central computer. They meet the connectivity bandwidth demands and they enable the platform modularity, scalability, and secure design partitioning with bridging to the Ethernet domain for the in-vehicle network. So Ethernet provides the in-vehicle network, including transport of the sensor data and timing to all the devices in the central computer, and PCIe switches provide the internal interconnect between the processors and endpoints within the central computer platform. We believe PCIe inside and Ethernet outside is the winning combination for next generation vehicles. Thank you and we're happy to take any questions.